Hello and welcome to the AD Bake Kitchen and episode three of our Bake Kitchen where we talk you through all things bake related. Now, Joe, you are back again, again. so you must be Can't doing something away. right for us to invite you back for a third time. <laughs> you should be a very consummate professional now at this. So we're gonna, again, pick your brains on okay. bait rolling. Yep. And for the first part, we want to concentrate on wafters. So that is the hat trick for you then, for anyone who hasn't watched them. Yep. You've shown us how to roll bottom baits, how to roll pop-ups, and now we're going to hit you with some wafters. Yep. So again, over to you. We'll okay. start with ingredients of exactly what you need to make a wafter. Right, so this is like the, the, probably the most popular question I get is how do I make a wafter? Pop-ups, bottom baits, they're all pretty much straightforward, but wafters, fries people's brains yep. and it really is actually a really tricky book bait to make yeah, it, it is. just it is it the main reason is because everyone uses a different rig each rig weighs differently if, if you use one particular rig that'd be great but people don't so but so i normally make i'm going to make them i make them for myself yep and i make them you know to a certain degree exactly how i like them some people like them to pop the hook up a little bit I like the hook to sink them and yeah. just to sit above, just to sit above For them. Me, that's, that's how I like thing. them as well, yeah. But other people like them differently. But the ingredients we need is more or less the same as what we had before. Yep. We go for the eggs, obviously, straight away. One egg mix, yeah. It's going to be our binder. Um, we use a, uh, we're going to use a base mix. In this case, we're going to use, use a cell. cell. Yep. We're going to use a pop-up mix, yep. which is what we're going to need to create this wafter hook yep. bait effect. And, of course, we need the cell activator, yep, which goes well. in the liquid. No uh, worries. I believe you've thrown a couple of Well, I am going to throw a curveball in because uh, I think <laughs> we should mix it up. And just to show that with bait making, it is only your own imagination. Yeah. So I've grabbed a bit of sweetener and some frutella yeah. in your double strength profile plus flavours. Yep. And I'm going to get you to put a drop of that in. That's so fine. it's going to be a bit of a different twist on cell. Yeah. yeah. And uh, just to show you that you can generally do yeah. what you want. There's no limitations. No, there's well. actually re no reason why you can't do that. You know, there's no rules. There's no written rules. Obviously, we just put uh, recommendations yeah. on what, you know, what should go together to save you writing in saying, well, we've rolled a bait and it don't roll properly. Yeah. If you stick by our guidelines, it does. It does. If you start adding bits and pieces, you might find things a bit trickier. You just have to play around. But it. eventually, you'll work yeah. it out and it will work. It's yeah, one of these things, especially with wafters, like you yeah. said, everyone's different, everyone wants a different thing. You might have to do this a couple of times, yeah, mightn't you, yeah, until yeah. you get Definitely. what you're trying to create. Yeah, without so, a doubt. It took me quite a while, actually, to get to the bottom of it, to realise what I needed, what I was doing wrong, if anything. You know? yeah. So that's, that's, yeah. No worries. So, straight on with it. Crack an egg into the bowl, first yes, thing. Yes, that's it. Perfect. Yep, over to you then. Okay. So again, one egg mix, this is probably going to make enough to make, you know, a good season's worth of hook baits. These are only going to be used as hook baits, they're wafters, and uh, it's going to be enough to keep you going for a good while. Yep. Crack your egg in. Crack your egg in. And then we mix together, yeah? A bit of a whisk. whisk. Stick that under there, just give it a bit of, a, no yeah, worries. Bit of elevation. So what do you want first? I'll that try is. and help you this time rather than just firing questions <laughs> at you. <laughs> That's all right. So uh, liquids into liquids. I remember, see, I'm learning from yeah, time you're getting back. You're yeah. getting liquids first of all. Activator. Yeah. So cell activator. So cell activator. And you've said yeah. before that this basically has everything inside it, doesn't it? It's mixed easily for people who want to just do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the way the, the, way the cell has been designed, it just, it's, it's been designed around the base mix and the actual liquid formula. That's, that's yeah. all you need, you know, you don't really need to put anything else in it. Um, it, just, it just works as it is. Yeah. Um, but in this case, we're gonna be adding a few, few different bits. Okay, so, so how course, much of this are we adding? Uh, we're gonna add around about 20 mil of this. 20 mil? Yeah. Again, you could, if you wanted to, you could put a bit more in? You could put a bit more in, you could add you could less. Put less in and put a different yeah. flavor with it as well, yeah. I've always so. found for a one egg mix, around 20 mil works fine for me. Yeah. 15. Try and keep that low as I can so the water's ready for when we are. 20 mil. 20 mil. Oh. Right, so I know that would probably be, you know, your own bait. You'd probably leave it like that, but the yeah. curveball I've thrown in. So on the spot, how much of this do we need to add? Uh, we're not, not going to go crazy with this because, like I say, the cell base mix itself, um, the cell liquid itself, yeah. is actually, you know, it works That's in enough perfect like that. tandem. Yeah. yeah, and it's just proved it again and again and again. Even at really low levels, it just works. Yeah. But because this is going to be a bit of a new one and you're going to take these out to test them. Possibly. So we'll see. <laughs> We're going to go for about two mil. Two mil, yeah. cool. It's just the centre of the spoon, basically. Yep. 
And then because you've put a highly concentrated flavour in, I'm guessing you're going to need a drop yep, of Yeah, we're just going to round that off again with, a, yep. with the Hydra Suite, yep. No worries. And mill-wise? Around about, about five mil actually in this one. So a fair bit, yeah? Yeah, a fair bit. You can get away with quite a bit of this sweetener, although it's really, really intense. Um, yep. When you're making the wafters, the wafters tend to take up quite a lot of, of, of the flavoured liquids. Okay. So, so hopefully here we're going to make our own little twist on on cell. Yeah. Be some sort of fruity celly type concoction we've come up with, and you never know. Mainline could be bringing it out next year. I could have, <laughs> uh, I could have been the one to put my name on it. I there should have cut it. Well, that does smell good. That fruitella is strong, yeah, isn't it? It does smell pretty good. Yeah. Get your nose in there. Really strong. Yeah. Right. So right. liquids mixed together. Okay, so what I forgot to add actually was we could do it with a cup. Yeah. So we can add half the cup and half. So, so you're going to add the... half and half. Yeah. Right, cup. I can help with that behind us here. Not put there for that reason, but Perfect. exactly what we needed. So Perfect. it doesn't matter what the measurement is, it just needs to be half and half, you said, yeah? Yeah, um, because we're obviously doing a one egg mix, if I was to fill it up with, with cell base mix and put that in, and the same, same with the polar mix, uh, polar yep. mix and put that in, Obviously, we'd have too much power. Too much, yep. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put around about, about half that cup. Yep. That's that base mix. This. There we go. Can't be opening it for me, thank you. So, for how you like your wafters to be, yep. you go, do you want a bit more in there? That's about, is that about half, half yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how you like them to be is half and half is the right balance for you, yeah? yeah well, no, gen general, yeah, generally it's around about right. Um, but it just depends on what, like I said, what, what rig. So if stuff, someone yeah. wanted, I mean, it goes without saying, if someone wanted a more buoyant one, yeah. there'd be more of the pop-up mix going in. Yeah. If you wanted it to pretty much, you know, be just more buoyant than a bottom bait, you'd add more base mix. Yes, yeah? precisely, yeah. Okay. And Mate, what we'll do is we'll mix this first. You mix that before you add this? Yep. Okay. Mix this first. So is there an argument for mixing them both together or are you happy doing it this way? No, you, you can do that once you've sort, sort of like, if you've, if you've got to a point where you know exactly how much you add, because yeah. how I very first started you know, getting it right was I used to add a, a cup of base mix and a cup of pop-up mix. Right. And mix those two together. Yep. Like I say, they generally come out a little bit more buoyant than what you want, but it depends on what rig you're using. What you're using, yeah. So what I started to do was I started to add a cup of base, like, go through the same process. Yep. And then just start, if it was too buoyant, start adding a bit more base mix. Okay. And then slowly, like, add, the, add it to the paste. It's a little bit of a long-winded process, which is why a lot of people should give up making yeah. it. But it is a long-winded process. So what I'll do now is add a bit, add a bit, of, this. Uh, bit of the polaris to it. So half a cup? Yeah, about half a cup. You tell me when. Keep going. Yep, like you've got the shakes. Yeah, I'm trying to get it out. I do. There? Yeah, maybe a little bit more. A bit more. Yeah. That's about it. That's there it. There we go. Lovely. So half and half. Yeah, we'll add that to the... To and the hopefully this is going to create, you know, what you want. Now, it, it probably is worth saying that if you don't want to create your own and get into the, the bait making experience, you mainline, you know, you are doing, you know, dedicated rolled balanced wafters already. Uh, we, we, cover, we cover most baits, well, near enough every base you could possibly think of. Yeah. You know, we do wafters already. We do cork dust wafters as well. Um, but yeah, we, we more or less cover every base yeah. you could possibly want, you know. There's so, so many options yeah. out so there. So if you aren't one to get your hands dirty and, and roll your own, they are available. But this does give it a personal touch. And I think that, personally, there's nothing better than catching on a bait that you've, you've made yourself, you know. Yeah. Especially if you make something different. If these come out to be quite good and they work, we're probably going to be the only people on the lake fishing with this particular flavour. And it could be a real edge. Yeah, definitely. So consistency wise, we're looking for pretty much a, a nice paste, yeah? Yes, yeah. To the point where it doesn't stick to your hands or? Yep, you don't want it really, you don't really want it sticking to your fingers at all. You want it right. to be a nice pliable paste that you yep. can squeeze it in your fingers, squeeze it in your hands and it doesn't stick at all, yeah. Exactly. And your first process was to mix with a fork. Once that stops getting to it blends, you get your hands in, yeah? Yep. I'll see if I can tidy up all <laughs> your bit while you're doing that. Yep. Yeah, it is a bit messy, so don't go doing it in your mother's kitchen without her knowing. <laughs> Especially if you're any I of the young ones out I there. I think when, when I first cooked mine, and uh, for anyone who's cooked baits before, the, the liquids smell nice when they're not, but after they're cooked, it's a funny smell, isn't it? Yeah, it and, is, um, yeah. And Mum came home and uh, 
She wasn't best pleased, let's put it that way. So yeah, what you've said there is spot on. And it's like you said before, it depends what flavour you're using as well. You know, they can really, really stink. Yeah. Some of them are really pungent, aren't they? You imagine someone coming home and you've been cooking some crab up in the kitchen. That, oh. probably, that probably isn't the one, is it? I'll never forget doing it at home when my mum come home and she said, what's that smell? She went crazy. She absolutely, <laughs> open the windows, what have you been doing? Oh my God. That's exactly the treatment I got, but I made a nice, uh, a nice sweet smelling one. So imagine what I would have got if it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. So that's looking like it's getting there now, isn't it? It's getting there, yeah. So we, we've gone for a twist on cell, but yep. your experience and, and world of bait knowledge. Yep. Is cell still the one that people are going to? Or? It's, the, it's the most popular used bait out of all the ones we use, we yep. produce. It's just one of those baits that you can just take anywhere. And be confident. And just be confident in it. Um, clever guys at Mainline, you know, they've, they've put some, some amazing things together, ingredient-wise and stuff and that. And they source a lot of things from all over the world, like animal feed, you know, yeah. pl farms and stuff like places like factories and that. And, um, and they go through a lot of scientific experiments and stuff to make sure that they're using the right stuff and the top ingredients yeah. and everything's just so on point with it all. Um, and nothing goes out until it's tried until it's and tested and it. tested again and again and again, you yeah. know? Um, so you're pretty confident, you know, if you're taking cells somewhere that your bait's good enough to catch, it's then about getting yourself in the right location on the fish yeah. and, it, you know, the bait's yeah. going to be good enough, isn't it? Definitely, yeah, without doubt. And I think it's one of those baits where it's been, it's been seen on so many different fisheries that the fish now recognise it as a food as source. As a natural, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah it is worth it, yeah. And it's a bit like sweet corn. If you take sweet corn into effect and you look at sweet corn, that's been used so many in so many venues all over the world yep. that fish now know that as a as a as a as a natural food natural source. Natural food source, yeah. And it doesn't really matter what you're fishing for either. No, you know? no it makes sense. Yeah. Um, and the other good point about the cell itself, and uh, it's a, it's quite interesting actually, is that all fish like to eat it, not just okay. carp. So if you're fishing with a bait, it's a bit like the link fun enough, it's a very similar sort of thing. Is that if you're fishing with that um, and the hook baits are soft. Yep. If you bring them in, a lot of the time they can be pecked, they can be, you know, bitten yeah. down a little bit, and it's, that's because all the other fish like, like it. it. And gen okay. generally that is normally a sign of a really, really good bait. Yeah, no, that makes you know? perfect sense. So even you match anglers out there like myself, you could make, you know, smaller baits, yeah. little like eight, six mil, and eight, they could be the ones, couldn't they? Yes. Could be something yep. for us to try that. Yeah, without a doubt. That could be uh, another episode we'll drag you back for. <laughs> Maybe with some little match boilies about yeah. six mil. You end up locking me in here. <laughs> so we're pretty much there now. You roll so the paste nicely. That's pretty much it. And it's, it's you nice can see there, it's not sticking to your hands. Yeah, perfect. So are we ready to roll? It smells lovely. No, so what we need to do now, actually, is break a bit off. Okay, so right. And although it will change slightly in the boiling process, we normally right. break, break a bit off, fill that cup up with a little bit of water and just drop it in the cup. Okay, and see, what and see the buoyancy. Because if no it sinks straight to the bottom, then we need to add a little bit more pop-up mix. Cool. So, so just by mind, magic, you've got some water. So this is, you're testing the buoyancy rate of it. So at this point with no hook on, would you expect it to float? It will float, but I'd expect it to kind of like drop Bob through down, the water and then slowly and then come, come up, up again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If it just sinks straight away to the bottom, it means we need to put a little bit more pop-up mix in it. That That's was that, pretty that, good, that, that wasn't that it? That yeah. was bad, actually. So for anyone who can't see it to try and explain it, it's gone all the way to the bottom pretty much with a short drop and it's come up and it's just breaking the surface there, isn't it? Yeah, so that's pretty probably with a hook on there, that's yeah. going to be hook flat, bait wafting above it. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty accurate. Pretty actually. good, cool. Yep. So 50-50 works again. 50-50. We'll move that over there. That's it. You can Do you want me to get out of the way? Yeah. Don't mind, please. I have got a table here. What size are you going for? Are you going for a smaller? Yeah, go yep. for a smaller no one. No worries. So this time, what mil is that, would you uh, say? 14. 14 mil? Again, you can make them whatever size you want. If you're fishing for smaller fish, bigger fish, like big baits, like small baits, you, it's your own imagination here. Joe's using a gun. Again, you could roll it by hand, but it's a, a long process and yep. you do lose consistency. So we've said it before, if you've watched the other episodes, that I would use a gun if you can get out there and use it just because it is that much better. Yeah, it just makes the whole process quicker, easier. Yeah, it does, yep. You know. In fact, another good point, I think, to point out is that what I tend to do a lot, actually, is I make up a lot of pastes. So I'm, I'll get to this point where it's the paste, yep. and I'll just put it in the freezer. Okay, so you could reuse that, could you? You can reuse it, um, but the main reason for that is that this is the hardest part, or say the, the longest time part. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the messiest part. It's the messiest part. So what I tend to do is make the paste, put it in the freezer, 
might make four or five different types of paste. Okay. And then over the course of like a few weeks or a few months, I think I'm running low on so and so. Run. Yep. I literally go and grab the back bit of paste, let it, def let it defrost, let it thaw out. Yep. And all I've got to get out is my pan, my gun, and my table. Oh, so you would literally defrost it straight in the gun straight and just gun roll it roll, like yeah. with the process we are now. Exactly. And you've got, you've got none of this mess around you. Yeah. It's literally just a case of putting them in and boiling them. I like that. Dry, I'm done. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. Especially if you've taken the time to get a, a wafter mix like this perfect. Yeah, exactly. You've not got to go through that whole process of adding base mix, no. adding pop-up mix. Yeah. And, and primarily with, the, with, with wafter mixes, that's what I do because they just, they can be a real pain to roll or to get right. Once you have got that big ball of waffle mix, which is perfect, yeah. it's quite important. It yeah. is, yeah. So I tend to just break it in half, roll out, you know, 100 baits, yep. and then um, put the rest in the freezer. So easy with these tables, a few backs and forwards, and you're there. Yeah, I can't believe, you know, like I said, I can't believe anyone would want to stand there and roll them by hand. I really <laughs> Unless can't. you wanted to misshape them or something, that's probably the only way I could see yeah. that, that you'd do it. But, I mean, that's come out, you know, that's absolutely... <laughs> Spot on, 14 mil. You couldn't get it any rounder than that by hand. So yeah, if you've got the option to use a table, why not? Okay, straight away there, we've got what, 30 baits there probably? Yeah, it in doesn't take no long. no time at all, is it? Yeah. No, it's so, it's so quick and so easy. Okay, okay. So it's worth a point mention at this point that we have got the water boiling yep. and again going back to previously it has to be boiling before you put them in yeah it has to be boiling yeah if it's the water's not hot enough you'll end up with just a sloppy messy bit of paste and it just yep. won't it just won't boil cool uh the baits won't harden because you've got obviously you've got egg in there again don't don't forget so yeah you know if you put a, an egg in a pan that's not hot it doesn't go doesn't white, do it, no. doesn't harden yeah uh, which is the whole idea of it so must admit, these are looking good. He's got his eyes on them. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> nice. It doesn't matter about the odd ones. If you want to, you can chuck them in a bin. For yep. most people, what I tend to do is I have a little bag by the side of me sometimes, and I'll just mount all those little bits up. Or if there's something that's not particularly round, because I'm normally quite particular, yep. I've got a little mark in it, I'll normally squash them up, a bit of paste, put them into in a little the bag, and then when I've finished these, I'll put back in the gun and roll them out again. Nice, you know. cool. Well, there's probably some left in there, but we've got more than enough hook baits here. Yep. So we're going to get on with the boiling bait. So the pan is nice and hot. Yep. Um, I know this from Drew's episode, it's two learning. and a half minutes. It's learning. So it's the same for wafters, pop-ups or bottom baits. Yep. Sorry, I could, should go. That's all right. So pop those in. So it's regardless of what you're making, two and a half minutes seems to be for you. Round about, the, round about yeah. the average time, yeah. If you want to, you know, if you want to boil for a little bit longer, you can, but two and a half minutes should be just about right. Cool. So while they're boiling, I've now got two and a half minutes to hassle you yep. for some information. So I've put a twist on cell here. Yes. We've mentioned quite a lot that cell is probably the most popular fish catching bait today. Yep. But in your years of bait making, you must have come up with flavors, have your own, not necessarily wafters, but let's go for the broad spectrum. Bottom baits, is there a combo you like or a flavor, a color you like or? With bottom baits, uh, I get asked that quite a bit actually, but with bottom baits for me, it's just fish fish meals really. You know, yeah. I've really got a thing for fish meals. Um, and that's one of the reasons since they, the guys brought out the link, that's, I've really been on that through my spring and my summer campaigns. Okay. Yeah. Mainly because it's, you know, it, it just ticks all the boxes for the sort of bait that I use. Um, but if I was to make a, an old school bait myself, it'd probably be like a LT94, some salmon extracts and stuff. You know, really old school sort of salmon oils and yeah. really sort of fishy, fishy meal type. So you're quite a, a big believer in fishy, match the hatch kind of sort of yeah, stuff as well, definitely. yeah? Yeah, definitely, yeah. I mean, if I could get away with using naturals, I would. If I get away with using worms or, you know, snails and mussels and stuff like that, if I get away with it, I would, but yeah. obviously smaller species normally sort of plague you, so you, they do, you can't. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it is a bit of a, yeah, a, bit yeah. of a tricky one. Like. And then what about if you were going to go for a higher track? So, I mean, if I was picking off the top of my head, I'd say pineapple's probably the most popular. Yeah. Have you got anything to beat that or? Mm, it's a really, it's a, I always find it really tricky because for me, it's just put the bait in the right place and you and will you're catch, gonna catch it. Yeah. If, it's a, if it's a good bait, you know, um, a decent bait and the fish, yeah. fish recognise that as a food. Yeah, so 100%. You will catch fish. I'm know? a big believer in that actually to go off. We get asked a lot of questions on lives and stuff like that. Yeah. That 
uh, what's the best bait? Why? And look, you just said it in a nutshell there. Mm. As long as the bait is quality, yeah. it's more about getting it in the right place. Yeah, definitely. 100%. Yeah. I mean, and I'm I, could, with that. I could, you know, bore you with, with silly nonsense and say, you, yep, get on the pineapple black this. current. Yeah, yeah. You've got to have that. But it's let's just be not fair, the one, is it? if yeah. you're a good angler, you know where the fish are, you find the fish. You've got a decent bait in front of them. There's no reason why you shouldn't catch yeah, them. You know? Spot on. And just like magic, I've wasted two and a half minutes of your time. Perfect. So they should yep. be pretty much ready. I'll stop the clock for you. They so are. now, are you, like before, are you just going to quickly get on that and test yeah, it, make sure it's right? Test, but I know they're, they're fine. So two and a half and minutes. And ju that's just like switching to the touch to you, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So sorry, I should be Perfect. getting things ready. So we'll get rid of the tables and your tray is here, sir. Lovely. Thank you very much. So straight out with them. And now the process again is you need to make sure these are air dry. Yeah, there's no yep. preservatives in this bag. No, no. So how long are you going to air dry these? What's your next steps? So next steps is again, 24 hours. Um, yep. put, them in, put them on a, lay them out on a towel. Um, another good tip is either buy a window if you've got a kitchen window and yep. obviously they smell nice and you're not bothering anybody. anybody. <laughs> um, on a towel, buy a kitchen window is a good one. An old hair dryer, like I've mentioned in previous episodes, um, is a good one, but you just want to get that moisture off them as quick as you can. Yeah. Um, ideally, like I say, anything towel-wise is usually very good, but something that's going to be dry, you know, they're not, they're not going to be able to build up any sweat on them or anything like that uh, yeah. for 24 hours. And then after that process, they go straight into an air dry bag. Okay. And they, they're hung up. So you'd um, hang them up for how long? A week? Yeah, a good week, maybe a week maybe and a half. Longer, yeah. Just keep coming back to them. But this particular base mix goes really hard pretty quick. Okay. The fish meals tend to a little bit slower because they're a bit more oily based. Yeah. And especially like on that last episode we did with a, we added the foss oil in that yeah, one, we remember? Did. Yeah. Um, the oil obviously takes a long, long time for it to dry. In fact, it never really dries out. But they, they tend to go more crusty when you add a, okay. bit, a bit more Yeah, so you have to do. So, so long as they're hard and completely dry, yeah. put them in a tub. That's your bait's done, yeah? That's your bait's done, yeah. Cool. The only thing I'd probably emphasise a little bit maybe is, is once they're air dried, although they're air dried, they still have, they're still live. They still have some live ingredients in them. Yeah. So I tend to, if I'm not going to use them like within the next couple of weeks, I mean, I normally knock up a bait like that and over the course of a couple of weeks, they're more or less gone. Okay, you know? yeah. Um, if I'm not catching fish with them, um, I'm using them and I'm, you know, you obviously bringing them allowed in to do too much one. fishing. <laughs> well, something like that. That would last me three years. I'm a very lucky man, yeah, it comes. But, but yeah, so I normally go through quite a bit of bait, even if they're hook baits. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so if you don't, yeah, so if you don't, you know, if you don't use them all in one go, you can put them in a the freezer and yeah. uh, and come back and use them another day. So a bit like your your freezer bottom baits, you just pop them in the freezer and you can defrost them, ready to use. Yeah, yeah, just just cool. just to make sure that they're yeah, that's you know just to make sure they're as fresh as what they yeah. were when you very first rolled them, you very first air dried them, if you like. Cool. You can come back to them. Right. Well, thank you very much again. And before we came online, they again has said that I can't have these baits, so I will get you to perhaps make me some off camera. But these <laughs> are going to go to a competition. So, for this one, we will have what flavour additive did I make Joe put in to put the Where twist on the cell? Where are you watching? So, go back and watch if you weren't, but what flavour addict did I add? And then, the chance is, comment on the flavour, we'll pick her in at random, and you'll win these very hook baits that we've just rolled here today. So, get in in that, and we will come back in part two, and okay. again, look at some more things bait related. Cool. Okay, Jay, so we've seen you make your wafters. Yep. Now, due to popular demand and some very good comments in the very first episode, you made a stick mix to go with your bottom baits you made in that particular episode. Yes. So I want to go on again and touch on a stick mix that you could use with these baits. Now, this is where we're proving that yep. it is up to your own imagination because there's a few different flavours here that we haven't put in the baits yep. and you really can get creative with this, can't yep. you? So let's go through, really simple, start off. You've chosen essential cell. Yes. Uh, again, just a fruitier version of cell, is it? Uh, it's a blend of two base mixes. Um, the essential uh, opal, which was yep. a bait that was released long, 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 long time ago, uh, done really, really well. Fish and caught so many sort of fish over over different venues. Yeah. Um, and then there was a bit of a call for it to come back to, to come back. And then obviously the guys got together and mixed that with the cell because the yeah. cell was so Because it was the one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Cool. Well, I'll open this up for you. Thank and you. Good. Actually, then, my putting, uh, making you put some fruit inside the cell wasn't such a bad idea because the stick wicks is going to go with it nicely. <laughs> right. So to that, so last time you actually had the activator, but yes. this time we're going to use the dedicated 
Stick mix liquid, yeah? yes, yes, cool. So, over to you again. Is it just a good glug of it, or yeah, with these, you can be as you know, as liberal as you want to be with them. To be so you fair. can't really overdo these, no, no, you can't overdo these at all. No, they're very, very sugary, very sweet. Um, the smells only thing, good, doesn't it? they do smell amazing, don't they? You can taste it, I could eat that. <laughs> oh, it's just incredible, isn't it? Um, the only thing, obviously, again, is, is that they, uh, you know, they can change the consistency of the mix. So you don't want, it, obviously, the mix too sloppy. Um, yep. But like we've kind of spoken about before, uh, you can always add a bit more stick, you know, a bit more yeah, powder you could to add, it. Yeah, to make it a bit either wet. way, if it's too wet, yeah. you know, you add more powder. It doesn't really matter too much, cool. no. So but you can actually go the complete opposite end of the spectrum, to be honest with you. Yeah. And you can actually make a paste. So okay. you could actually add too much of that to that to that to form it to a paste, yeah. To yeah. form it to a paste, and you could use the paste to wrap round bites. Yeah. You know? Okay, another thing. It's just things that people don't There is don't so think many about. things, isn't there, that you, you don't realise yeah. that they have more than one usage, yeah. a lot of these products. Exactly, yeah. Cool. And there it's looking go. nearly there. So the last thing you've got, yep. we're really mixing flavours now. We've got some pineapple bait sprays, some of the bait sprays from Mainline. These are mega, aren't they? Yeah, they are quite really amazing, intense actually. in flavoured. They and again, are. is this just a case you're going to put a few squirts into it? Or? Yeah, it is really because, I mean, that, the, the actual taste profile of these are something else. I mean, they were in two or three years development. I'm pretty sure they took a long, long time to develop yeah. uh, and to get them right because the taste of them are quite incredible. Um, I always get people to taste them at the shows. Yeah. I always ask if they've got any allergies or anything like that just okay. in case, you know, I mean, I'm going to sprout and end up grabbing <laughs> a fat face. So I always ask, but the, the reactions are incredible, especially from the kids, but from everyone in general. You yep. sprout on the finger and they taste it, and to see their face go, oh my God, I want some more of that. Well, I guess we should test it. Put a little bit on there. Just have a taste of that. Smells good. No, it does taste like pineapple. It generally does taste no like pineapple. There's no aftertaste. No, no really, it's not bitter. It's not too sweet. No, that, they I mean, really are. That generally, yeah, it's a real nice yeah, and taste. And I'm not just saying that because, no. you know, a lot of times people just say things for the, for the sake of it. Yeah. But I really can, I can't endorse these anymore, yeah. to be fair. Yeah. Well, I think that um, I've done a bit of acting, but I wouldn't be able to style it out that well if it didn't <laughs> taste nice. So, uh, yeah, that Should does, have been a salesman, that does I? really taste very good. So... Not only that, you, you're going to put a couple of squirts into this stick mix. Yeah. You could use, you could spray this onto your baits uh, and stuff like that. Yeah. So limitations again of your bait sprays literally are endless. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you can spray it on the on, on your sticks before they go out. Um, another really good tip with those is I spray them on my hook links. Okay. If yeah. I'm fishing, sometimes I'm fishing somewhere a little bit sort of tricky, and I know that they know about bait. I know that they realise what's going on. They're not stupid fish. I like to have something around, you know, because a single hook bait does really well. Yeah. And what I like to do sometimes is just spray my hook links. Spray it all up and down. So they're yeah. all soaked. And even if I'm using a leg core leader, spray up the leg core leader. Just so give something around. Yeah, that whole area. That whole got area is some something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Other than just a, you know a single hook bait. Cool. Um, so yeah. Right. So that's pretty much yeah. there. Like I said, very good. I'll show that to you there. It doesn't get much more simple than that, but trust me. That's going to catch fish, isn't it? You're really eat good. Some, you can try some? I'm not going to eat some, no. <laughs> but I'm going to use well, it. Try, it. I'm going to use it. Very good. Very simple. And again, as ever, very comprehensive look at bait. So, right. thank you very much yeah. for coming along. I hope you've enjoyed that one, and we'll see you again next time in the bait kitchen. Ciao for now.